Good morning, good evening, or uh, good day, depending on where you are in the world. Today is day eight of the 40-day holiness challenge. Could also be called the 40-day sinless challenge. We get together every day, 10 a.m. California time, to fellowship and to encourage and edify one another, speak light and love into one another as we all uh, set out to declare ourselves the Lord, to surrender our members moment to moment to Him, uh, changing out our wants and our ways, our knee-jerk reactions, the ignorance of our flesh, as the scripture calls it, and instead being awake in the truth, free in the truth. And so that is what we're doing here on the 40 day challenge in today's day number eight. You made it through an entire week if you've gone this far. So congratulations, that is a big, huge thing. Don't think it is not. Um, we like to start off every video with a prayer. So if you would, just pray with me. Almighty Jehovah, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for this fellowship. And we thank you, Lord, for your call for us to walk righteously and holy because you are a righteous and holy God. Because you are our Father in heaven who is perfect and you told us to be perfect. Lord, you not only told us, but you gave us the ability to do so. You gave us the ability to know you and to know your footsteps and to walk them with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh. We thank you so much, Lord that you that you would send the lamb onto the cross the spotless perfect lamb onto the cross that you would rise from the grave being glorious and being a, an example of what we all will do on that day lord you came and you blessed and you spoke truth and you returned on the heaven and then you sent us the holy spirit you gave us relationship with you that we could not have otherwise and in that, Lord, you gave us power and authority over sin, over lust, over greed, over all of the addictions, over all of the anger and the frustrations that the, the world tempts us to. Lord, you have given us your love, peace, mercy, and grace that surpasses understanding. Lord, we thank you for what you do. We thank you that you do in us when we know we are not worthy to receive any of you. Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may be fully strong, fully equipped, and as the Bible says, be totally complete in you, perfectly complete in you. That we may be vessels that pour over onto those we come in contact with, that we may be ones who speak the truth, Lord, that we may be ones that walk the truth, and that our lives may be a living testimony that we love you, and that we seek your, your happiness, that we seek to do your will. A living testimony, Lord, not just with words and not just with praises, but Lord, make us a living testimony. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, wherever you're at. Uh, so the passages of the day, Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew your mind. First on the list, stalk yourself like a lion. Isaiah 52, 11, depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her, purify yourselves. You who bear the vessels, of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amos 5.14. These passages are linked in the description of this video as well, so you guys can look them up for yourself later. Amos 5.14. Seek good, not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you as you have said. So, the Bible very clearly tells us to remove ourselves from evil, from the ways of our flesh from the ways of the world and to surrender our ways over to God. This is what scripture is constantly telling us. Basically, the entire Bible is God's love letter onto us, pleading, petitioning to us, I want to be your God. I'm going to kind of tell you all these things and all these wonderful things I've done and how awesome it is when I am your God. For instance, like I created everything. Um, I created a garden for Adam and Eve to reside in. Uh, I flooded the world, but gave Noah 120 year heads up so that he could build a boat and save his family. Like I'm a pretty good God. 
Um, I uh, parted the Red Sea and allowed the Israelites to f get free from slavery. Uh, I was with them every day as a pillar of fire and a cloud, and I rained down food from the sky so they could eat, and they wouldn't have to do much work. I'm a pretty awesome God. I even commanded they take a day off. Yeah, how good of a God am I? So he writes this whole love letter to us, and then he tells us in his love letter how us humans don't listen to him, don't want him as our God. Literally, us humans do not want God as our God. No, we do not. No, we do not. We want a God that will um, tell us to do everything our flesh wants to do. Do you know why we want a God that we will carve an image out of a tree or a rock or clay or, I don't know, metals? That we will worship it's not real but we want that god instead we want to worship that god we want to spend our time and effort and knowledge in that god it's because those are the gods that agree with whatever we want to do that's a really fun god we just want a god who will just tell us yes whatever you want to do today however you want to do it you just you just go be you okay and i love you and i'm gonna bless you and i'm gonna make you even better and more successful at the things you want to do. Whereas like this God's like, hey, I um, I, uh, I know that you inherited this kind of like uh, go against the grain, go against my will kind of nature from your, from, from your forefathers. I apologize for that. But I tell you what, I'm gonna come on earth as a human, limit myself. I'm gonna die on the cross, a horrific death, by the way. I'll be sinless. I'll be an example. I'll take all the, the punishment that I have set forth so I could bless the world, so I could anoint the world, that I, I, I could be on earth and be a God and a father to the earth and its inhabitants. Okay, so I made, I made these laws because I'm God. I can't be associated with certain things. So I had to set these laws which would allow me to be God on earth. And then you broke all, all those laws so I couldn't come and be with you. But to show you how bad I want to be with you, I'm going to come down, be in human form, limited, be 100% human, but also 100% Godhead in the body of flesh. I'm going to die a horrific death on the cross, absorb the punishment that has to exist so that I can be your, your father, to be your king, to be your God. I will absorb it for you. I will go into hell. I will bring out those whom I love. I will bring them out of hell. I will bring them out of the depths of Sheol, out of the depths of Hades, and I will bring them into new life. I will allow them to walk the earth one more time. I will walk the earth myself one more time with my wounds from my, my cross. I will be ascended. I will go back into heaven without a, a staircase without an escalator, without an elevator. Like I'm just gonna fly in the air or up into the sky so everybody can see, proving, you know, that once again, and like raising from the dead wasn't enough. Once again, I am who I say that I am in flesh, you know? And then I'm going to send you, now that I've cleaned the world with my innocent blood, I've allowed my blood to drip into the very soil of the earth that I had set these rules upon so I could be in relationship with it. And I had to make a clause, I had to make a, a loophole that said if innocent blood is shed upon the earth, if perfect blood is shed upon the earth, if innocent life dies, well then that covers the sin. And that allows me to come and be in those who receive that covering. I want to be your God. And I wrote this whole life, this whole existence of humanity, so you could see me and know me and know that I love you so much. And I've performed miracle after miracle. I've healed people. I've walked on water and even invited some of you to walk on water with me. Because why not? I'm God. And I want to have a relationship with you. That's what this is all about. That's the God we don't want. That's the God that we think, yeah, I know, but I really like my other gods. I really like just waking up and doing everything I want to do. 
You really don't like having to fit to your rules. Even though you did all that for me, I'm super grateful. It's really nice, it's very sweet, thank you very much. But, I also really like the sin you created in the flesh, it's a really good thing. So if you could just like accept me how I am, broken and sinful, that would be awesome. And he says back, if you could just accept me, broken and torn apart and pierced through, and trust that I did that not because I'm an idiot, God, but because I want to give you even better things than the things that you've tasted already. I want to give you me. What is better, the creation that I give, that I made, or me? What will feel better, the creation or the drug or the plant or the elation or the party or me, the one who created it? How can the creation feel better, be a better experience than the Creator. This is what holiness is about. This is the choice we have to make every day, moment to moment. We have to look at ourselves, look square in the eyes and say, do I really believe the scriptures? Do I really believe this Bible that I'm reading, that I should be reading, if I'm reading it, should be reading it, all of it, every word in order? Um, do you really believe it? Like, do you really believe he parted the Red Sea? Do you really believe he gave Noah a boat? I mean, really? Did he really flood the world? Did he really die on the cross and rise again? Like, no, like, for real though. Like, was he dead? Was he just sleeping? Was he like really dead? Did he really go? Like, were there really dead people walking the earth as well when he came back? Like, is that true? Like, there was already like, people who have been dead for a very long time, like came back to earth and were walking. It was like, is that really true? Like, should I really believe this? It's really the only choice you have to make. Is this God real? Is this love letter to us real? And therefore, if it is, what in the heck are we doing chasing other gods, chasing other pleasures, chasing the creation? What in the heck are we doing? And here's the cool part, you're not alone. We're not alone, I'm not alone. Every generation since the creation of Adam and Eve have gone after their own ways and gone against what God set up so that he could be with us and be our father and our God. Everybody's done it. Literally every single person's done it, except for one, Yeshua. And he's the one that frees us, ironic. Ironic that the one who is perfect is the one that frees all the sinners and all the partakers of the of the day, right? Crazy, 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 crazy. It's crazy. I don't know if you guys heard, but that's crazy. Okay, do you guys get it now? That's what we're doing. We're choosing which, which is our God? Who is our God? Do we love the creation? Do we love, do we love everything else in this world or anything else in this world more than we love God? Or do we love the one who created it? And do we want him to be our true living father God? Which one is it that we want? Do we do we really think the creation is better? I can't, I don't know why I'm drilling this home. It must be the Holy Spirit because this is not at all what I wanted to talk about when I was wanting to do this video today. Why, why do we have such a hard time not believing God? Like we can say we believe in God as like a genie in a bottle. Hey Lord, I hear that you answer prayers. So I got a list of goodies I'd like. Hallelujah. If I could have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that would be fantastic to me, right? This is how we respond to God. But then he says, you silly human, I haven't given you on earth the blessings and the beauty and the power and the wonderfulness that I want to give you. You haven't seen it yet. It doesn't exist. You can't go to the store and buy it. You can't go to the party and dance with it. You can't go and smoke it or toke it or sniff it or shoot it into your arm. You can't go and pay a ticket and get backstage passes to it. You cannot earn it. You cannot save it. You cannot store it. You cannot put it in the bank. You cannot boast it. You cannot fly in it. You cannot drive fast in it. The thing that I want to give you you've never seen before. You've never even heard before. You have never come close to experiencing it. He says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. So 
Why, why, why are you doubting that I got him limited to the things I've already created? What, like I, I can only, I can only give you gold? Because I made gold? Do you not think I can make a thing better than gold? How about me? Hi. Maybe I'm better than gold. I am God. Hallelujah. Hello. Right? Okay. Do we get this yet? Why, why do we find it so hard to believe him? Why do we go, but I really, really like these things of the world. Why do we do it? Because we haven't seen yet. Because we haven't seen. We have not seen. It is Faith is believing in things unseen. Believing that what he says is better will come. That's faith. We Okay, I believe it. I can't see it. I don't know it. But you say better things are going to come if I give up. These really cool things. I really like these things. But you're telling me something even better is coming, which I've never seen or heard of or know. But you're saying something is better is coming. So, okay, I believe you. That's faith. That's faith. Can we have faith? Can we pray for more faith? Can we pray to believe? Really, that's what it is. Can we just believe him? Can we be, as I like to say, persuaded? I am persuaded. I am 100% convinced, persuaded that you are a real God who gives real promises that really part the Red Sea. And you really want to give me your Holy Spirit. You really want to be in me. You really want to give me the things the world has not seen and has not heard. And that it is, according to you, God, that it's better than these really great things in 2020s. Like really great things that we have. Like you could totally give me those too. But you're telling me you got something better. So that's okay. I'm going to believe you. I'll, I'll go with what? I'll go with curtain number two, which is God's blessings. Let's see what that turns out to be. That's what we have to do. So here we go. How do we do this? How do we fight the good fight? We control our thoughts. We control our actions. How? By stalking ourselves like a lion. Best way to do it, give over your day to God. That's what he says. If you allow me to be your God, if you allow me to be in control, if you allow me to steer the ship, I'm going to take you to an island better than you could have ever dreamed. It's going to be a place filled with me, ah, the creator, wonderfulness. Start your day off with prayer. Read the Bible every day. Just get into, just get into the word. But I highly encourage, as always, read the entire Bible first word to last in order, which is what we're doing Later on right here at Yeshua Network, we have the entire Bible read through. Yes, I forgot to make the post, but it is up now. So you can go and make your comments on the graphics. Um, be in fellowship. We are sheep. He designed it so that we couldn't be like just all everything in us. He designed it so that we would force to be blessings onto others so that we get his blessing on us. So the more we bless others, the more we get blessed. So being and serving others actually fights against the normal way of the world, which is to go and take from others, to seek how to get from others, to seek how to better one up others, or to see how to be better than others, right? God's, God's design for us and the world is the complete opposite. He says, go and serve others. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to give you a double portion of me. Because after all, I'm the better reward than all those other things. All the money, all the glitz, all the glamour, all the cars, all the jets, all the houses. I'm better. So I'll give you a double portion of me every time you bless somebody else. Hallelujah. Praise, worship, and testify. Not just with words, not just with raising your hands. But that is the tool to quickly pull out of your pocket when the devil's whispering in your ear. When the temptation is pulling you down the path. Mm -mm, start praising and worshiping. But testify live a testimony my brothers and sisters live a testimony with your life with your members are surrendered to the law then you can be a living testimony because he comes into you and he walks the righteous path for you and then you have more to say you have more to give than just your words brothers and sisters oh you have a living testimony you breathe, you eat, you drink testimony of the Lord. And that is power. Understand? I can be a Southern preacher, don't you think? Fasting. Fasting is that shot in the arm, not to be mistaken with boasting about your sufferings, but rather a form of celebration onto God for what he's already given you. Be still and know that he is the Lord thy God. Don't just be still and let the enemy come in and speak and beat you up and tell you all those things that you did wrong and how your life is broken and how you're dumb and how your faith is ridiculous and doesn't make any sense. No, nope. be still and know 
without a shadow of a doubt, be still and be persuaded that he is Lord, Master, Creator, Absolute, the everything, the one in charge of all. Okay, be still and know that. Last one, remove all preparations for sins. Makes it real easy if it's not in your house. Makes it real easy if it's not in the house to not have to fight the fight. Remove the baby fights. As they stack up in the day, they can get pretty tiresome. They can get pretty worrisome. They can whittle us down. And by the end of the day, we gotta have that drink. By the end of the day, we gotta just turn on that boob tube and, and just zone out, let the mind go drifty drifty because we cannot handle it. Removing the preparation of sin automatically removes the fight for you. It's not there, it's not tempting you. It's not stumbling you. You just remove it. Get it out of the house. Get it out of your life. Get it out of the car. Get it out of the playlist. Get it out of the movie list. Get it out. Delete it from the computer. Whatever you got to do. Delete it. Get it gone. Out of your life. It's just a really easy way to remove a fight. Okay? You, won't be, you might be tempted to bring it back into the house. Sure. But that is a fight. Whereas if it's in the house, if it's in your life, then there's the temptation of once you're hearing it, not to sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Okay, now that we've gone through the list, now that we've reminded you, now that you have done eight days, if you're doing this in, in along with us, you've done more than an entire week of fighting the good fight and more than an entire week of picking up your cross and following him. Yeah, you have already had eight days of victory. That's what the devil doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want you to know that you've had eight days of victory. Victory in that, as video number one discusses, you are not ignorant anymore. You have red pill, blue pilled. You've taken the I want to be awake pill. You said, I don't want to be asleep anymore. Eight days you have stalked yourself, looked at yourself, watched the world, looked at all the situations that have been presented, and you say, how do I live in this moment? How do I respond in this moment? Your journey towards holiness is a gift from God. People don't do that. It's not in our natural desire. It's in our natural desire to carve an image of whatever we want and then do whatever we want. That's, that's it. So you have eight days of victory already. The devil doesn't want you to know that. You think to yourself, wow, I've done eight days or seven days, today's the eighth day. I've done an entire week of actually doing what the Lord's commanded me to do, to give my life to him. It hasn't maybe been perfect, maybe not been perfect, or I've gotten a really grouchy about it and that kind of hurt a little bit. He said it kind of would, but it's worth it. But you have victory, that's crazy. Seven days of doing it. And you think to yourself before as you were living through it, I don't know if I can do 40, this is really hard. But look, you just did seven. You're on day eight. Really, how hard was it? Pretty hard, sure. Hurt a little bit, sure. But as you look back on it, you're like, you know what? You know what? I can, I, I, I can, I can do this another day. I can do this another moment. Keep surrendering it over to him, and it is possible. It is possible. And the more you do, the more he blesses. The more you do, the more he blesses. The more he fills you with him. Okay, let's go ahead and open it up. Let's hear your comments of how it has been for you. Uh, and let's hear how, how seven days of victory have felt for those who have done it. Uh, even if you stumbled up a little bit, you stubbed your toe. The fact that you are aware you stubbed your toe or stumbled up a little bit is victory. Most people are ignorant and blind. They don't even realize that part. So if you at least realize that you did stumble up, tripped up a little bit, you have a chance to change it, which is what I believe and hope that you're all doing every day anyways. Amen. Gilda, I just floored you. I'm just floored you guys. This is really real, isn't it? How else would he be able to read our minds and speak to us like this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eight days of victory indeed, Amber. Uh, Leo, I was so excited, joyful, thankful today because this challenge
where to go. Where'd the comment go? Why does Facebook do this? Hold on one second. Let me get on the computer, guys. One sec. One second, one second. Okay. The cell phone is not cutting it again. Let's see. Where are we? Where are we to, to do this? We have to speak to... Oh, look, there's me talking. Okay. Let's see. Where are we? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. I was so excited. This is Leo. I was so excited, joyful, and thankful today because the challenge matches with what I was told to do, but it is quite impossible to watch live. It is loading all five seconds. Oh, yeah. I'm having a lot lag issues today. Well, hopefully you'll enjoy it recorded. Uh, Gilda, I took an hour uh, uh, off from stalking myself Friday night, but I've been 100% stalker mode otherwise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good. An hour as opposed to normally 24 hours of not knowing, not stalking. So that's a pretty good success rate. Susan, no pride though, stalk. Yep. Really, you felt the same. Oh, uh, Gilda, uh, be a good stalker, but only on to yourself. <laughs> that's funny right there. Uh, that's, you guys are, you guys are making jokes. I like the jokes. Yes. Crystal Lewis, definitely going to meditate on this word after I've been bombarded with distractions. You're such a blessing, Nathan. I was blessed to be a blessing, serving the Lord, surrendering over my days to him that he may show me what is a better way. And he has indeed given me a better life in a better way. Ogachuku, I've been singing with outbursts of praise the last couple of days through challenges, and it honestly feels therapeutic and uplifting. I have definitely stumbled, but will keep on keeping on. Amen, sister. It's amazing how well it works, huh? Christine, I've stumbled over and over. I need to listen to this 24-7. May the Lord be with you. It's just a surrender every moment to every moment. And praise and worship him when the enemy comes in and tempts. That uh, is a very good, powerful secret. Get plugged into fellowship too. If you're surrounded by fellow believers who also want to walk right, it becomes a lot easier. If you're surrounded by people who want to sin and tempt you into sin, well, obviously that's going to make it a lot harder. Julie, yesterday I felt really convicted by the Holy Spirit hugging my neighbor. I don't always hug him, but this time I sensed a spiritual ew. I'm thankful, by the way, that was her ew. I just acted it out. I'm thankful the Lord's telling me to draw the line further out with him, even if it seems like something small. It also helped me to talk and pray with my mom over the situation. Well, praise the Lord. And some success and some failure with all areas. Pray for me to overcome the struggles with cigarettes. Will do. Mm, just a suggestion. I know you can always go to the store and get more, but maybe if they're in the house, we get rid of them. For 40 days. Give it 40 days of not of not having it in the house. Might help, might help. I know you can always go to the store and buy them, but that drive to the store to go spend more money might 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 be the pause you need to talk yourself out of having another one. Chrissy May, I'm going to use a ring or something to stay focused to hold something in my hand moment to focus stone. Okay. Uh, that's, my, that's a good idea. That might work. Yeah, I'll praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Juliet, a few nights ago, I wasn't able to fall asleep. So I was awake the whole night and I had to work the next day for 13 hours, which I need full energy and concentration. I knew I wouldn't get through it, my flesh alone. So I prayed hard that Yeshua will give me the supernatural strength for the day. And he carried me through three exclamation marks. Hallelujah. I had more energy than my regular day, meaning with sleep. Having concentration and strength, my workmate noticed it. I told her it was because of him. Praise Yeshua. And you lived a testimony, Juliet. You lived a testimony. Hallelujah. Susan, hallelujah. I used to just speak praise, but now God is helping me to sing them also. Amen. Dan, I've been convicted to not touch my phone until after this 10 a.m. check-in. My screen time is down 25% this week, and my days are started with the focus of the challenge. Really great. Wow, praise the Lord, Dan. That's a good idea. Sharon, it definitely, it's definitely been feeling different lately, even before this challenge started. Amen. I believe that that would be the Lord. April Inglis, yes. Oh, Chrissy May is saying to April, yes, I was meditating on this before prayer this morning. Such a good idea, Chrissy says. Leo, I think I found a way to make it work. Well, praise the Lord. 
Jesse, report. After a week of exhaustion from continued warfare, God blessed me with rest, and I feel renewed this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. He promises that he will give you rest. He promises that those who come on to him will get his rest. Hallelujah. Joe, pray hands. Susan, that's awesome, Dan. Yeah, it is. And I did manage to have a 24-hour food fast. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. That is a good one. Sarah, it's getting hard. I knew from the beginning it wouldn't be easy. Today, I'm water fasting. My family don't get it. Mm. They also believe in God, but they are at different levels in their life. So I can understand where they are coming from and that they don't mean it. But it makes it so hard. My sister even said to me that she is losing me and that I'm becoming to be a Jehovah's Witness and that I'm exaggerating it. That was really painful for me. I tried to stay strong and dedicated, but it's a big challenge. Indeed, it feels like I'm all alone, but you're not. Exactly though, it does feel that way. Today, I even thought, why am I even doing this? Very common. I remembered your video of two days ago that this will happen and that it will all be worthy, worth it. So I praise and worship God instead. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, hallelujah. Okay, well, uh, be careful on the water fasting. That's a, uh, that's a dangerous one. So just, just be blessed with it. Glad you're doing it if that's what the Spirit led you to do, but... That's an interesting one, so be careful on it. Joe, first day listening to this, something moved me to listen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Blessed to have you here. Gilda, I noticed that reading the Bible has the same effect as an antidepressant. The more you read, the better you feel. Seriously, I tested it out. Yep, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing how well that works. It is amazing. Same with uh, plugging into fellowship, being a blessing unto others. All of those things, all the things he's given us are amazing antidepressants. Allison, thankful for this ministry. Please pray for my husband as he is really struggling with anger in his life around his job, which may just be the outward excuse for something deeper, Jesus knows, and that bleeds into almost every aspect of his life. He seems unsettled and fighting flesh. Also pray for me as I continue to support him and love him through this and submit. I feel like we're walking on eggshells a lot and look forward to him being out of the house because of the stress he brings in. I pray for him throughout the day and know God is in control. Praying for him is good. Continue to speak love, blessing, and edification on him when it is hard. I can only imagine. I'm not married, but I almost was once. Um, Evelyn, I've been having a lot of peace through the day but everything, but evenings have been a struggle. So I've been falling asleep with worship music playing in his house. Praise the Lord. D. Duke, I talked to a family member who said something that seemed so wrong. I told my husband later, why would she say that? And I felt the Holy Spirit remind me that her statement was between God and her. I am not to judge. I am not walking in her shoes. I am called to love her. Maybe next time I will be aware enough that I catch those judgment thoughts, take those thoughts captive before they spew out of my mouth. Thankful for this time to focus on listening more carefully to God. Amen. There you go. That's it. That's all we can do. Just pay attention more, learn more, stalk ourselves more, make a choice that we weren't able to make before because we were just doing. Where now we're actually surrendering. That's what I mean by surrender. We, we, we watch, we look, and we go, what would, what would Jesus do? The funny stereotypical thing, but you know, what would Yeshua do? What would he say? How would he say it? How would he react? Right? This is, what, this is what allows us a brief pause between our thought, our actions, and being of the old way, and being in the new way. Uh, hallelujah. April, I felt this peace almost more today. Praise the Lord. Praying for him and you, I can relate. Continual prayers, Jesse says, continual prayers for you, my sister. Uh, Bob, hug, hug right back at you. Juliet, can the devil read our minds as well, or we need to speak something out for them to know? Hmm. I don't know, Juliet. There's theological debate on that, but I personally, I, I think he can plant obviously a seed in our head, but I don't know if he can hear all of our thoughts. But then again, I have prayed just in my head, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. So because we know that God hears, 
we know that the spirit moves. So I don't know. This is a good question. This is a good question. A couple of days of fighting all kinds of fear, fear of failing, fear of what people will think of me, fear of not being good enough, fear. These fears are fears of the past. I'm thankful that the Lord Most High allows me to face these fears and helps to overcome them. Still work in progress and I tell myself the Lord Most High is worth it and he is. Praise the Most High for all things, the highs and the lows. Amen, Anna. Amen. Gilda, I just wanted to say thank you for not judging us, Nathan. Not judging you. Thank you for still loving us through all of our sins, addict, addiction, failures. Thank you for because it makes us all different in the world and are to be judged. Well, how can I? Uh, how, how can I judge anybody when I myself am a sinner and a stumbler and a, a walker? towards the world myself. How, how could I ever judge anybody else? I I myself live in bones and flesh, so I know exactly what the struggle is like, but I also know what the victory is like too. So that's the wonderful thing about you will be that as well. 40 days, well, 35 days from now, no, 30, 30, why can't I count? 33 days, 32 days from now, you will be somebody who knows what it's like to be consumed and surrendered to flesh and somebody who knows what it's like to be consumed and surrendered to the Lord. And you shall be able to bless others and to speak love and light and hope unto them because you have witnessed it and testified and experienced it. Right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So continue down the path, my friends. Continue down the path and uh, continue to receive all that he wants to give you and bless you. Um, Ma, I, think, I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm going through a tough time, no support from family, not even my mom is trying to, uh, not even my mom is trying to be nice but, but bother me. I am going through medical condition and whatever I do, not working, please pray. If God wants me to come back home, let me know and talk to me directly um, or indirectly and don't let me suffer and have lots of pain. I think I'm losing it. I need his presence. Well, in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Ma, we lift you up. We lift up your situation. We lift up your medical condition. And we pray right now, Lord, for Ma, and we pray that your holy name and the blood of Christ be upon her or him. And that there, I think it's a her bless her and that she may um, she may know your touch she may experience you and that the word become clear what it is for her will for your will for her to do to go or not go to be or not be Lord and then provide her a, a touch of healing by the 39 lashes on your back that we may be healed completely and utterly for you did not take those lashes in vanity in Yeshua's name amen hallelujah Looking forward to a great testimony from you, Ma, how it all works out and is becomes a blessing. Um, Julie, yeah, fight the flesh, fam. Ruta, how do you free yourself from material attacks? Having a mortgage to pay in these times, it seems like it is the most important thing to do in my life, but God wants me to free from that. Well, yes, I understand what you're saying. We had talked about this actually on the live video uh, the other day. I think it was Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday evening. There are things that are of this world that make us feel very like, yeah, especially when we are walking with the Lord, especially when we are surrendering to the Lord and he does begin to fill us up. The more of God and the other realm, the heavenly realm we experience, the less of this world we like. And sometimes even, very common, we actually get to the point where we don't even want to experience this world anymore because the heavenly realm is so good. It's so wonderful. It's so great. So you do wake up and you do have bills to pay and you have kids to feed and you have, you know, friends to attend to and events to go to and these pre-designed, you know, things that, that you committed yourself to and so on and so forth. These things, these things are to be done unto the Lord. So when you pay your mortgage, right? Don't just pay your mortgage because there is a, a master on the other end that says, I will take your house or I will take your land if you don't pay your mortgage. Instead, 
realize that the mortgage is an opportunity that God has given you. And just like he says to the Israelites, you're going to go and you're going to you're going to cross this river, this, this big ocean. You're going to go through it. You're going to cross a river. You're going to come into a place and you're going to you're going to create a temple for me and you're going to cut stone. You're going to hew, you know, you're going to hew stone. You're going to cut trees. You're going to design. You're going to melt down gold. There's all this work that they have to do in order for them to receive his blessing on earth even, right? So perceive what you have to do in this life as a holy task that God has given you. Don't pay your mortgage just because you have to pay it so they don't take your property. Pay your mortgage onto God. Pay your mortgage saying, Lord, I'm paying this mortgage. I'm working hard to pay this mortgage because somehow this blesses you. Somehow this blesses you in that I am blessed to receive this gift from you. And so all that we do, whether it's taking care of the kids, cleaning the house, paying the mortgage, going to work and being a good steward onto our boss, we don't do these things for the earthly gain, though our mind and our life has trained us to do just that. We do these earthly things now with new eyes and a new perception, which is that now we give them on to God and we do them on to God. So it may look on the outside that we're doing the exact same thing we've always done our whole life and what everybody else walking around us is doing. But on the inside, our perspective is completely different. We realize that nothing we do in this world now is for the world or to gain the world or even to gain that peace of mind that the world will give us according to when we pay off our mortgage, right? Now we do it onto the Lord knowing he has already given us a peace of mind because we surrender it to him. When we serve our boss instead of going and working for our boss to get a paycheck, work reward, if we go to our work and we go to be a good steward, we'll get the paycheck, but we'll also get a heavenly blessing. So the mindset changes for the same task and it no longer becomes as daunting, I will say. It can indeed actually become a massive uh, uh, blessing, but beyond that, it becomes encouraging and it becomes something that you actually look at and say, not look at what the world has me by the you know what by, but instead look at what the Lord has entrusted onto me and has given me victory in. Amen? Hopefully that speaks to you on that. Uh, R Richard, hey Nathan, serious question. How do I stay right with the Lord when I'm playing golf? This may sound city, silly, but when the round is going bad, I have a serious fight going on eternally. There's only one thing you can do. You gotta surrender it over to him and you gotta just say, Lord, how can, what if you're losing because the Lord needs the other person to win. What if the Lord has called you to lose the golf match, the basketball match, these kind of things. If you cannot control yourself on the golf course and you do step out of that will of God, then the golf course could become a temptation of sin for you. It could. So these are the things that you have to look at. If you cannot change your mindset into realizing that Maybe you're on the golf course not to put the ball in the hole, but maybe you're on the golf course to be a blessing onto the human standing next to you, even if that means you lose. Now, if you're in a team, a team match, and you need to do good and to win so that the guy closestly standing next to you or who's on your team gets blessed by you, uh, then I think that that's, 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 that's a good reason to want to do better. But if your desire to want to do better overrides your desire to be a spiritual blessing onto the people around you, then the game has become an idol. So you have to uh, you have to make sure that when you when you do all that you do, even play a round of golf, uh, not to not being silly, uh, even when you play a round of golf, you you play the round of golf as if Christ was playing the round of golf, which is most likely he'd be taking the opportunity to make sure that uh, people understood the good news and to just love on them and shine light on them and, and hear maybe what's going on in their life. Uh, it wouldn't be so much about putting the ball in the hole. Amen? Uh, and I thank you, Yeshua, for the ability to pay the mortgage. Amen, sister, amen. Some people can't and some people never will have the ability to pay a mortgage. They will be renters their whole life. So for what seems like a burden to one is a wish and a hope for another. Juliet, my friend wanted 
a lift home, but I was so tired. Oh, a lift home, a ride home. But I was so tired and her house was a different way to mine. My flesh was like, no, just go home. You're tired and not worth it. She can take an Uber anyway. But my spirit was like, she's your neighbor. Love her like yourself. I was so hesitant, but I just surrendered and gave her a lift. And she kept saying, thank you. I know you love me. It warmed my heart. Be a blessing, Juliet. That is awesome. What a testimony. What a testimony. There it is. In surrendering our flesh uh, and offering it to the Lord and saying, your will be done. What would you do here? And uh, and you got, you got the reward. Love, companionship, appreciation, knowing that you're blessing with somebody else. Sharon, I live at number seven, so he must pick so he must have picked that one for me. Okay, I don't know what that means you live at number seven, but your address is number seven? Juliet, the devil kept on attacking me like never before. He does it at night before I sleep. Please pray for me, amen? That's a very common time, yep. When our brain is quiet and we're tired and we don't have the, the strength to fight anymore, yeah, he likes to attack at night. Reading the word before you go to sleep too does help. If you, if you read the word until you basically pass out, oh, it's hard for the devil to be whispering stuff in your ear while you're reading the word of God. Carmen, I will trust in Yeshua completely. I will perceive what holy task he wants me to show praise to him, surrender to him. The heavenly blessing is his presence, his victory. I love him so much. Amen, Carmen. Richard, amen. Thank you, Nathan. Blessing is mine. Lisa, I thank Yeshua for my brother coming home from the hospital today after getting his kidney, kidney removed due to cancer. Oh no. Lifting him up, quick recovery, and praise the Lord uh, that they hopefully got all the cancer. Uh, hallelujah. Very glad to have him back with you. April, you might be at the golf course to help someone. The physical thing you are doing isn't really reason. Yep, yeah, there you go. Amber, read Bible, deep pray person, deep pray before bed. It works for me. Yes, amen. Yes, it speaks to me, I am really ashamed to say, but I will confess. I had to buy food for a person that didn't have food, and I really struggled, and I really fought God on that. And I said, but I have children, I have mortgage. But I knew God would be utmost disappointed if I didn't help that person. That's how bad I am. That's how much I struggle. Well, okay, there's... That's a good struggle. And that's uh, and you. You have the ability to see it, and you have the ability to stock it, and you have the ability to to perceive these things, and then you made the right choice against your flesh, against your desire, against maybe even your logical better judgment. I have kids. I have mortgage. I can't afford to pay this meal twenty dollars, whatever it is. We're literally going to be just at the penny for ourselves as it is, but it is also the Lord who provides. And uh, we are to have wisdom, but when the spirit moves in you, though it may not make sense, like throw a net back into the ocean you've been fishing in all day, and this time you're going to catch something, though you've not caught a single fish. And then when you do it, when you surrender to him, that's the thing about when he's your God, when he is your king and master, when he's your sovereign Lord, if he tells you to throw a net on this other side of the boat, you will bring up more fish then you or your brothers or your friends can count because by the time you're done counting, they'll all be stinky from the sun. So you just got to sell them as quickly as possible and get rid of them and, and just say, thank you, Lord, for the blessing. So it'll, it'll happen. It will happen. The Lord has got you. The Lord be there. You, and you have your brothers and sisters here as well. Lisa, is it just me or does it seem like there are many spiritual attacks lately? There might be, yes. There might be a more increase of spiritual attacks. I, I, I think that this is a conversation people are having as well, just in the sense that we are getting closer and closer always to that time, to that day, uh, where the devil knows he hath but a short moment, right? A short hour. Jesse Lugo, there is a visible increase. He knows his time is short. Exactly, exactly, see? There it is, there it is, and he knows too that when we surrender our moments and our members over to the Lord, it means the Lord is here on earth. The Lord and his light are shining here on earth. And man, that is bad news for the enemy. That is bad news for the enemy. Woo! That was a 
Leo. April English, where do thoughts actually come from? I often think this is how they, I often think how, how are they created? I mean, that is an interesting question. Are you meaning like neurologically, how are they created or where, where in our life do they come from? I think it's just a, they build upon ourselves. They build upon them and we have an entire chain link of thoughts in our life. And most often those thoughts are based upon the way that we lived our life the moment before. Uh, so Chris Potter, speaking of Jesus or Satan, the enemy is Satan. He who ha knows he has but a short moment, that's Satan. He, he basically, he, the Bible talks about how he unleashes all his tricks to try to cause the world pain and suffering at the very end because he knows that he's running out of time. So he's got to send all that he's got. So if that's what you're asking, yeah. Yep. All right, you guys, day number eight. I am, I am beyond honored. I am beyond blessed to have brothers and sisters who have decided to watch their thoughts and their actions and say to themselves, I don't, uh, I don't want to live at least for 40 days. Uh, in the way that I've lived my entire life, which is just doing and just going and just being, I want to stop and take a look at what I'm doing. Take a look at even what I'm thinking. And I want to go, is this bringing me closer to God? Does this edify God? Does this bless God? Does this testify of God? To do this, ladies and gentlemen, in my humble opinion, is a greater miracle that God has moved in human beings to be new creations, it is a greater miracle than parting the Red Sea. Uh, to me, we are witnessing real life biblical miracles. Uh, you see throughout the Bible, the hardest thing that God got people to do is to turn away from their own ways and look to him. So for every soul that is doing this series, this 40 day challenge, you are the impossible. You are the person that God says, I seek but one, just one, if I could just find one. So there's more than one, there's a lot. There's a lot of us doing this and it's extremely inspiring. It's extremely blessed. And so, uh, yeah, I, I want you to know that if, you're, if you are fighting the good fight, you are the one that God says he hoped there would be. So continue to tell that to the enemy. Our success is in the fight. Our success is in the surrender and giving it to the Lord and being aware of what our ills are, our ill wills are, amen? I love you guys. Yeshua loves you even more. Be blessed, be the blessing, keep fighting the good fight. See you at one o'clock for the entire Bible read through. Sorry, I posted late. Hopefully you can get your comments up. Talk to you soon.